Hey, hey, good peeps of Overclock, I am Blue Devil, and today we have an epic battle of the towers. Who are the contenders, you ask? Well, it's gonna be a four-way battle between Deep Cool's Gamex GT, Cooler Master's MA620P, Be Quiet's Dark Rock 4, and Noctua's NHU12A. Each opponent will be battling each other in aesthetics, installation, compatibility, thermals, and lastly, noise. Ratings will be done in the typical overclock fashion, one to five flames for each battle, then averaging out for the final. So you may ask, why these air coolers? It really came down to what I had on hand. Sure, I would love to have a variation of the ever so popular Hyper 212 or the NHU 15. However, these air coolers are from three different price points, 25 to $50, 50 to $100, and over $100. The Gamma GT and the MA620P both have RGB, while it's the other two do not. The Dark Rock 4 has a single 135 millimeter fan, while the others have either one or two 120 millimeter fans. Coolmaster's MA620P is also the only one with a twin tower design, so we shall see if that helps any. So let's start this battle, shall we? Aesthetics, this one could be a little subjective depending on your own stance on RGB. However, I believe RGB still can be tastefully done. The Gamex GT, while being the simplest design of the four, offers two elements of RGB, the top of the tower and the fan itself. I didn't mind this implementation. The tower itself was not as polished as Noctua's NHU-12A, but hey, it's a $35 cooler. The fins of the cooler are an unfinished aluminum with four copper heat pipes with direct contact with the CPU IHS. The Cooler Master Master Air MA620P steps things up in the looks department with two RGB fans and some matte black top plates with the Cooler Master logo on both sides. The fin stack again is unfinished just like the Gamex GT was. Cooler Master also has opted to use a direct copper heat pipe design. However, six heat pipes are used between the two towers. To increase surface cooling area, Cooler Master also has placed an aluminum heat sink right on top of the mounting plate. Be Quiet Dark Rock 4, like I mentioned earlier, is like something straight out of the Dark Knight movie. Sleek, stealthy, and most notably, quiet. The special black coating with ceramic particles covers the wave contoured fins beautifully. Add the diamond cut aluminum top plate, the 135mm Silent Wings fan, and six copper heat pipes, and even Batman wouldn't be able to resist. Last, but certainly not least, is Noctua's NHU-12A. Yeah, I know, the poop brown coloring of the 220mm NF A1225 fans are, yes, ugly. The tower, however, has the fit and finish you would expect from a high-end CPU cooler. Sporting seven nickel-plated heat pipes and a polished fin array, the NHU-12A comes together nicely, but only if those fans might be the only eyesore, but you could swap them out for the company's Redux line of fans which would match the NHU-12A nicely. All right, next up is installation. This is where things got a little bit more interesting. The Deepcool Gamex GT was actually pretty straightforward to install. Once the mounting brackets were installed, thermal paste your CPU, then screw down the four retention screws. The fan just clips on with two metal clips and with the option to add in a second fan later. Moving over to the Cooler Master Master Air MA620P, and it's a different story. While similar in mounting to the Gamex GT, the ma 620 p has retention nuts instead of screws. I guess the decision was made because the twin tower design blocks the mounting points for a normal screwdriver. The MA620P by far is the hardest to install, especially when higher than normal motherboard heat sinks are present. Honestly, who thought this was a good idea? While frustrating, I did manage to get the MA620 mounted pretty securely. The Dark Rock 4 was actually one of the simplest coolers to install. Backplate, two brackets, and a crossbeam bracket. Done. Be Quiet even includes a magnetic tipped screwdriver, which is a nice touch. However, I did come across a little wobble, which tells me that the Dark Rock 4 could have been tightened down a bit more. Trying a couple of remounts led to the same conclusion. And Noctua's NHU-12A was by far the easiest and best to install of all the coolers tested. Again, backplate two brackets and screw down. Fitment was tight and secure, first rate cooler. The attention to detail was very noticeable, making installation a breeze. When it comes to compatibility of CPU coolers, there's really only a couple things that could be an issue. Memory clearance, PCIe X16 slot clearance, side panel clearance, and socket support are the most common issues associated with air coolers. 
So which one fares the best? Since none of the CPU tower air coolers support TR4, it's a level battlefield. Starting with the Gamex GT, this CPU cooler doesn't suffer from any clearance issues. Like the Hyper 212, it has a lot of compatibility, but most notably memory clearance for higher RGB dips. Moving to the MA620P, things are in double trouble. Due to the nature of the dual tower design, as well as having 220mm fans, memory dim clearance is an issue if you're planning on populating all four slots on mainstream Intel or AMD platforms. The height of the MA620P is, is also a bit limiting, at 165 millimeters, making it possible to bump into some side panels. The Dark Rock 4, being a single tower design, isn't as chubby as the MA620P, but it still suffers from memory clearance issues on DIMM slot 1. To avoid this, you have to adjust the 135 millimeter fan past the top of the tower, raising the height, making it possible to have side panel fitment issues. Now, the Noctua NH-U12A didn't suffer from any of the shortcomings previously noted. It sat neatly with both 120 millimeter fans without any sort of clearance issues. Perfect. Thermals. Personally, I think the Dark Rock 4 and the NHU-12A will do the best here, since they are the bit of a more premium air cooler, but I could be wrong. The Gamex GT, while being the simplest design, actually surprised me. TDP is rated at 150 watts for Intel and 140 watts for AMD, having only a single 120 millimeter fan sporting only four direct contact heat pipes achieved an idle package temp of 42 degrees Celsius at 500 RPM. Loaded up, the fan ramped up to around 1500 RPM, resulting in a package temp of 71 degrees Celsius. Not too shabby for a $35 cooler. Next up is Cooler Master's Master Air MA620P, twin tower, twin 120 millimeter fan CPU cooler. Also sporting the direct heat pipe contact design, the MA620P ups the heat pipe count to six, as well as adding in an additional heat sink on top of the mounting plate for additional cooling. Thermally, the MA620P is a bit underwhelming, considering its size. At idle, the MA620P mustered only 40C at 300 RPM. At load with the two 120mm master fans running at 1800 RPM, the CPU package temp was about 69 degrees. Not as cool as I would have expected from a twin tower cooler. Third in line is Be Quiet's Dark Rock 4, which rates its cooler with a TDP rating of 200 watts. As I suspected, this guy will be a good performer, and a good performer it is. At a mere 500 RPM, the 135mm Silent Links PWM fan keeps the 5GHz 8700K at 37C. Loaded, the Dark Rock 4 keeps the things chilly at 65C while running at a cool 1300 RPM. Lastly, the Noctua NHU12A. Noctua is boasting 140mm size cooler performance from the NH. U12A with the two included 120 millimeter NF A1225 fans. However, I think that running those two fans at 2000 RPM has a lot to do with it. At idle, the NHU12A runs the two 120 millimeter fans at 500 RPM, resulting in a 41C temp. However, once these fans ramp up to the 2000 RPM, my 8700K chilled out at 62C, thus making the NHU12A from Noctua the winner for thermals. Lastly is noise. At idle, all contenders were within 37 dBA to 39 dBA, meaning only two dBA separated the worst from the best. At load, however, was a bit of a different story. The Gamex GT topped the charts at 50 dBA. Surprisingly, the NHU12A rang up the tab with 47 dBA, mostly due to its two 2000 RPM 120mm fans. The Cooler Master MA620P trailed only slightly with 45 dBA. The winner of the Dark Rock 4 with a staggering 42 dBA with the fan running at the low 1300 RPM. And the results are in. The Be Quiet Dark Rock 4 managed 23 flames, averaging 4.6, taking first place. The Noctua NHU-12A, 22 flames, averaging 4.4 average, taking second. The Deep Cooled Gamex GT took 17 flames with 3.4 average, taking third. And the Cooler Master MA620P got 14 flames with 2.8 average. Well, that was an interesting battle of the towers. It came in close, but Be Quiet's Dark Rock 4 came out with the win by one flame overall over Noctua's NHU-12A. Averaging the results out was a mere two tenths of a flame difference. Honestly, you can't go wrong with either one of these tower coolers, but the Dark Rock 4 managed to take the crown. All right, guys, I'm Blue Devil. Thank you so much for reading or watching. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up button and be sure to share the crap out of this. Thanks again, guys. Blue Devil out.